What is up, YouTube? Tool Tubers of the World. My name is Brad. Welcome to the workbench. We got a shitload of projects to look at. And I'm going to tell you kind of how I made it and what I learned while making it. down the line and kind of make a, a nice little loop around the shop here this was a uh it's a wrench lamp yep there's uh, no other way to explain it this uh, popped into my head one day i don't know why mr dan mckevitt gave me I, the idea for the base uh being an old rotor i got about 14 hours of man hours in this granted the first one you make always takes the longest because you're kind of designing and, and figuring out how you want to make stuff as you go. So I could probably knock another one out in half a day and then spend the other half painting and then hit it with clear the next morning. So you're probably looking at about eight hours, nine hours. But let's just start at the bottom here. We got an old rotor I got for a dollar. Well, I got two for two dollars from a local shop. A nice little push button switch then these wrenches here i just bought i grabbed a handful i think it was like 16 wrenches and i picked out the wrenches that looked the absolute worst and i paid ten dollars for the whole lot then when i get them in the truck and i really start looking at them it's proto williams i mean really good wrenches granted they're torn to shit like all the chrome's missing and i kept a few i just couldn't sacrifice them but this is a uh, sun x this base one and this is actually a proto it was sad to do it and it was heartbreaking to do it but like i said they were in really bad shape you never know with the paint on them now and then the old socket of course was just another pawn shop fine it was just an impact socket i'm sure it was probably at pittsburgh i couldn't see any name on it and then right here was a oh like these little lamps but smaller and i just took it apart painted the outside I'm not super happy with this look. I'd like to find like a cage, like the old metal trouble lights. This one's already sold. It's a good little man cave or a workbench lamp. I'd like to start selling these if there's enough of an interest in them. And I've got a way to where they can ship. If anybody's interested in this, shoot me an email. Let's talk about it. We'll, we'll discuss the design and details because my idea is to make all these joints articulate by using ratchets. And I made one for Dan with his dad's old wrenches. It's still drying outside. My ideal design would be between this one and some of the features of that one. So this whole thing was welded with the little Harbor Freight Flux Core welder, the cheapest one they sell. And granted the rotor, I heated it up. I preheated this section because it is a little bit thicker metal. I got some damn good welds out of it. I was surprisingly pleasing and i'm still using the uh the stock wire there's a nut in there and if we come around this other side the way i got these two to join up is i welded two nuts together that actually fit the sockets and then i just uh welded the sockets to the nuts let's move on to that weird looking thing over there as i was cleaning out the shop to make room for those two filing cabinet things that i got i came across this old battery charger now, I think my original plan for it was to try to get it working again, but that really never happened. I've got a different battery charger that I can use. I really liked this turquoise color, and the rust actually kind of accented it. I mean, I'm not a design freak or anything. In fact, if you ask my wife, I've got pretty poor taste. It just, I was making these lamps and the other lamp, and I said... Well, hell, man, this would probably be the easiest one I make. I went ahead and just gutted it all. Uh, I left the dial. I think the dial is kind of what sets the piece off. Uh, I thought for a minute about trying to incorporate this dial to read the incoming power. It, it just wasn't worth the time. Uh, people just like the look of shit. They don't really care if it's functional. I put a new power cord in. Uh, cut the switch out here and made the hole big enough to put a pop-in box. Uh, got this little switch with the phone charging port, so USB. For the light up top, I just used a pipe fitting with a cap on the bottom of a close nipple. 
and drilled a hole through the cap to run my wires up through. Socket is just super glued in and it holds really well. There's no issue with it. I have been shocked at how much I've used super glue lately. Shit's amazing. Amazing. And I wanted a way to provide, you know, like regular wall outlets. And I thought about just putting those little single pop-in outlets on the side. But I thought, well, hell, I need a, I need another cord. I need something to fill this hole. So I just chopped up one of the extension cords I have in my shop, which this is actually a really good extension cord. For the outside, you know, all I did was take a soft bristle brush scratched off you know the loose rust dirt and grime and then just put a uh, a clear coat on it that's pretty much that i really like the look of it's it that industrial modern steam pump look steam pump steam punk steam punk whatever the hell that means so if you're interested this might still be for sale by the time this video comes out who knows minus the bulb i'm not going to ship a bulb you can you can buy your own they're cheap so let's move on to that thing back there and the woodworking I did. All right, guys, so right here with this and that combined, we have a step stool. I didn't expect it to look this good <laughs> whenever I started making something for my kids to stomp on. But it is what it is. It was a big, giant experiment like everything is in my shop. We'll kind of talk about how we made this first. I just, the base is pretty simple. Let's go look at it. As you can see, this is just a bunch of strips all glued up. The darker wood, I believe, is longleaf pine. Some people have said it might be. Uh, and if you go to my table saw resaw video, which is kind of a horde video, it's one of my first ones. This is actually some of the wood that I got from fence posts that I salvaged, or the fence planks, and resawed it. And I just think it's a beautiful wood, and that's the last I had of it. I it took a little bit of planning to do this. Was I built this section, the middle section, and the outside section first. Then I flipped it up on its side like this. This is plenty dry enough. With the white pieces dry, dry fit in the bottom, and I glued this side. And the first pieces were tricky. Once you got the first pieces, it pretty much held itself. And then once this side dried, I flipped it over and did the other side the same way. And by the way, these uh, Miles Craft Tri-Grips used them a ton like i've used these things every day whether it was sanding or using little uh, pointy edges standing them up and using that to flip my piece to start working on the other side i used them almost every day this two week break i was home let's go and look at the top that i'll be putting on top of here so this was an idea i had a company called bell force products sent me a bunch of hardwood scraps that I, I asked them to send them to me because I was going to try to make some file handles and some chisel handles. I wanted to make my own chisels. But that project has been delayed and I wanted to use these scraps because they were beautiful. Look, you got some beautiful, beautiful wood in there. Yeah, I just want to give them a shout out and say thank you, Bell Force Products. They are a har online hardwood dealer. If you're in a remote area and you need to get some hardwood, I would fully trust going through them. I took some of their scraps and I planed them all down to, I think, about an inch in thickness, maybe a little more. And then I started just chopping them up in random sizes, glued up a panel. I started trying to lay out these pieces in as random a pattern as humanly possible. To glue them, I used wood glue with a couple dabs of super glue. I'd stick it and I'd hold it for about 30 seconds and it was secure enough that I didn't have to worry about it after that. So once I got the pieces laid out, I put, I built a form around it and poured epoxy because everywhere is black, it's just uh, epoxy. Poured it, you know, to where it was just starting to barely come over. And I started running it through the planer. And then I cut it to size on the table saw. After that, I went ahead and just found some of the pine scraps that was left over from building this thing thinned them down three eighths of an inch thick and glued them up on here and then it was a marathon sanding session i went 60 80 120 180 220 and then i used a block with 320 uh just hand sanded the top only for the finish i'm using a blend of polyurethane oil based 
thin down with mineral spirits. All right, so now we'll head outside and we'll check out the special lamp I made for Mr. Dan McKevitt out of his father's wrenches that he sent me. I think it's a pretty cool way, you know, if you have some tools that you don't want to get rid of because they have some sentimental value, make another use for them. All right, guys, so we're at the outside workbench, and uh, let me back up so you can actually see the monstrosity I created for Mr. McKevitt. And uh, this is his workbench wrench link. We got a variety of wrenches that Mr. Dan McKevitt sent to me. And a lot of these wrenches were his dad's. Not all of them, I had to add some. Like I know for sure this, this oddball one was one of them. This one was one of them. The main wrench right here in the middle. Uh, we met. I saw those dogs. I got an audience. <laughs> uh, this main wrench I made into a C clamp by cutting the top and the bottom off a C clamp and welding it to the wrench. Kind of get you a peek in there, maybe. And uh, so that'll hold it to the bench. I wasn't sure if he was going to put it, let's say, on this side of a bench or on the front so I put this little tube in here and all it is is a pipe in there and that'll allow you to swivel it whichever way you want and then you tighten it down with a little set screw so the coolest part hopefully y'all can still hear me okay is yes you can swivel it this way or that way but then I put a ratchet here and a ratchet here so that if you want to, let's say, adjust this bottom piece, you loosen the ratchet, and then you just click it back over to lock it to where it won't go down any further. So if you want to get nice and close to your work, there you go. You want to raise this one back up some, there you go. So the only problem you would have is if you're going completely vertical. So you gotta always be leaning one way or the other. So you could even come like this, flip it, I mean, your options are limitless in here. These are the older ratchets, you know, they're cheap ones that I found, so sometimes this can be hard to adjust back and forth, but it's not impossible. And then this one down here is actually a quick release, so this won't go out no matter what you do. I just wanted to show it to you broken down. This was the base piece with the C-clamp. You can really get a look at it. There is. There's just the piece of pipe. Welded around. I notched out the pipe to the C-clamp. So from there, this little ratchet sits inside. And then here's the middle section. So this actually goes into that ratchet right there. And then this is the top section. And this goes into that one. I also want to mention before we go is I use the shit out of these Capri tool clamps. These are actual welding clamps and they performed awesome. I'm gonna do a complete review of them uh, later on I just wanted to actually show you this thing you can get some serious clamping power with that I mean everything's just beefy on it the damn thing probably weighs 15 pounds I bet and I leave it outside and I'm near the coast so the fact that it hasn't rusted yet is pretty awesome if you're looking for a welding clamp you got a few bucks to spend because they're not cheap I'd highly recommend these Capri welding clamps. Next time I'm home, which, because I'm running out of time now, I'm about to head back out, but I'd like to try to build a love child of the way this one articulates with the simplicity of the other one attached to the rotor. So Dan, I hope you like it. It's coming your way. All right, guys, so this might have ended up being a little bit of a long video. Tell me what you think if you kind of enjoy this format where I just kind of go through a bunch of projects or if you like the build videos better. Uh, tell me if you like to see a build video on any one of these projects. So if you ever see something that I make that, you, that you're like, oh man, I'd like to have that, shoot me an email. I'll tell you what it costs to make, what it's gonna cost to ship, and we'll see if we can work something out, man. I've also got the stickers for sale. If you wanna help support the channel that way, I think there was some really creative stuff this time. The, the creative juices were just flowing through my mind and, and inspiration and help from others you know the writ idea from mr bruce l the rotor idea from mr dan mckevin i mean that's why i love this community uh we all talk to each other we all share knowledge and it ends up helping us all become better
hit that like button, hit that subscribe button down there, and I'll holler at y'all next time. Peace! People love rust, you know. Poor people go to Ikea and try to buy shit that looks brand new. Rich people buy shit that looks like this.